hello. My name's Gwen, Edmund Gwen. I've selected tonight's play in the belief that nowadays there's an increasing need for laughter, sheer healthy, relaxed fun. And I know of no people more filled with laughter or more willing to share it with the rest of the world than the Irish. Tonight's play is called The Great Shining Saucer of Paddy Fenine. Long title, isn't it, eh? <laughs> yes, but it's written with such acute perception of the charm, wit and imagination of those merry people that I sincerely hope you won't find it too long. But Sheila, darling, I'm only repeating what the whole village is saying about him. Then you'll not repeat it again, for I'll not listen. They've no call to be saying such things about Grandfather. But you've got to admit, he's been telling some wild tales. So you're agreeing with him. You're saying he's crazy too. Now hold on a bit. I didn't say he was crazy exactly. I only said some people were thinking it. Maybe you haven't heard. But now he's been saying he walked right up and touched it. And sure, who would believe such a thing as that? I'll have you know, Terry McGuinness, that I'd believe it. If Grandfather said it, I believe it. Sheila, you're talking out of your head. Oh, it runs in the family, you're thinking. I'm thinking no such thing. Sheila, I came over to have it settled between us about a wedding day. What difference if an old man says one thing or another? Between us, what difference? I'll tell you what difference. You wanted it settled about our wedding day. All right, I'll settle it for you. There'll be no wedding day. Sheila, what's this you're saying? I'm saying nobody can be calling my grandfather a crazy man and asking me what day we'll be married in the same breath. That's what I'm saying. I don't blame you for standing up for your grandfather. I know how much you love him, but... That's kind of you. Wait! Maybe he did see it. Maybe he even touched it. If you say so, he did! I had it in mind young Terry McGuinness was coming to supper tonight. Yes, there was talk of it. Mm -hmm. Can I give you some more of the pudding, Sheila, darling? No, thank you, Granny. He hasn't run out on you, has he? And you getting ready to set the day? Oh! What's ailing her? Ah, the poor darling. With her heart breaking into bits with the grief of it on her and the shame of it weighting her down. And all because of you, Paddy Fanine. Me? What have I done? Ah, you. And you talk of seeing things in the sky. And why did you have to go spilling it about all over the village? I saw what I saw, right over the scruff of the hill it was. A fallen star, that's what it was, and nothing else whatever. A fallen star. If it was a fallen star, which it was not, you'll be kind enough to tell me what strange power was in it that made it fall up again. Ah, for that it did, <laughs> and with great speed. <laughs> Oh, and there, there it was, like a great shining saucer in the sky. Oh, it was a wondrous sight, to be sure. Yeah. Yes, slowly, slowly it came down, down, with no greater speed than my hand is dropping now. Down, down until it was half hidden behind the hill. And there it hung, as still as a picture on the wall. Just 30 seconds, maybe, just waiting, like a bus letting out passengers. And then, glory be, that's the answer. It come down to let out passengers. Oh, just wait. Just wait till I see that old scoffer, Tim McGuinness, <laughs> and him laughing at me and saying there was no motive behind a saucer coming down at all, at all. You're not going out of here this night to spread more wild tales. Step aside, woman. For a week, old McGuinness has been laughing and asking, but now, now I've got the great scientific answer. Paddy for me. You're not going forth this night to bring more scorn on our house. Isn't it enough that your talking has brought tears to your own granddaughter, the poor orphan child of your, of your own dead son? May God rest him. 
What's this you're saying? I'm saying it is your wild talking is the reason that Sheila has quarreled with Terry McGuinness and sent him packing. And them planning to be married come New Year. Grandfather, I've got to know. Have you been going around saying you touched this thing? Sheila, you know I cut out my tongue before I bring a tear to your heart. Answer the child, Paddy Fanny. I was coming to that. You're going away from it. I'll tell you this, Sheila, darling. I could have touched it by walking over to it. In fact, I was just starting over when up it went. Now, don't misbelieve me, darling. Over there in the States, in a little place called Texas, there's a man seen them 11 times, and he's talked to the people, or whatever they are. It's not me, Grandfather. You know I'd never misbelieve you. Mm. Is it Terry? Don't doubt the lad, darling. He's been listening to his grandfather. It's him that's been going about putting doubt in people's minds as to my authenticity. Oh, but my great brain's been working. And I'm going out now to prove to old McGuinness the scientificness of my deductions. Don't worry, darling. Before the evening's out, young Terry will be back. I'm begging your pardon. Yes, grandfather. Hmm. Out of my way, woman. Now, the way I see it, it's one of two things. Either Paddy's lying or he isn't. No, there's no doubt about it, McGuinness. It's one thing or the other. I'm afraid nobody could argue that point. And we've known them all our lives. You're right again. All our lives. Since we were babes, nobody could argue that point. And he's our dearest friend. He is indeed. Our dearest friend. Not a doubt of him. So, after considering all these facts carefully, I'd say, He's a dirty liar. And furthermore, he's insulting our intelligence. I've never had any intelligence insulted so hard in all my life. Ah, now, we must be too unkind to the poor man. After all, he's a great spinner of yarns when he has a few in him. Oh, sure. A man couldn't believe a word he said. But never before had I thought he was a liar. He said he'd swear it on the book. Ah, but did he? Did he swear it on the book? You were the last one to be with him the night it happened, Fogarty. I was that. We walked home together. Paddy leaving me at the gate saying good night as always. Was he sober? Sober as the rest of us. It's strange you didn't see this thing, Fogarty. Nobody saw it. Nobody but Paddy saw it. Nobody has ever seen one around here. I've said right from the start. What would one of them saucer things be wanting around here? I've come to the conclusion that we've been doing Paddy an injustice by calling him a liar. I think he's crazy. I heard that. I'm reminding you, Scoffers, was ignorant men like you that laughed at Galileo. I never laughed at him. I didn't even know the lad. And as for you, McGuinness, I've got the great scientific answer to what you were asking. Well, no, that'll be interesting. Even though nobody's going to believe a word of it. Ah, you've got a closed mind, McGuinness. A tight little closed mind with no vision at all. If you'd have been Queen Isabella, the world would still be square. It's your mind that concerns us right now. You and them saucer things you're lying about. Lying, am I? I'll tell you this, Tim McGuinness. Your great-grandson will be riding in saucers. The sky will be full of them. Hm. Probably he'll be constable in some city up on Mars. Well, what would he be doing that for when he could get a job up in Dublin? I closer to home and more pay to. Never mind getting me great-grandson a job in the force. I've had no answer to me query. Just what would one of these saucer things be doing coming down around here? It come down to let out passengers. <laughs> <laughs> it come down to let out passengers. <laughs> and maybe to pick up a couple of policemen. To <laughs> get <laughs> a policeman. That's why, Paddy. To see what's going on down here, that's why. Down here in our village? You, you mean they're spying on us? All, all over the world. They're infiltrating the world, that's what they're doing. Coming here to look us over, so to speak. Exactly. They're probably trying to find out if we're worth invading. Well, then tell us, Mr. Einstein, uh, why is it we haven't seen them around if they're going to infiltrate us? They disguise themselves. Oh, with a beard, maybe, and a wig. <laughs> uh, uh, don't show your ignorance any more than you can help. They do it scientific. So scientific, you couldn't tell them from one of ourselves. You mean they 
come around here and talk to us and, and have a drink, maybe. Oh, well, I couldn't say if they're drinking, men folk, eh? That'll be one of the little things he hasn't set his mind to yet. No doubt he'll have the answer. If they don't lock him up first. Ah, oh, I can see I'm wasting my time revealing the shape of things to come to the likes of you. You are that. I'm a practical man, and I'm not one to be taken in by wild cock and bull stories that nobody can prove. I, a man's got to have some evidence. Evidence? Proof? That's all you can think of. No vision, no imagination. You have enough of that for the four of us. And we've had a plenty of it. If I didn't know you were such stupid men, I'd resent your insults. But considering the source, I control my temper. And let me intellect take over. And if it wasn't for the fact that my intellect is so tremendous as it is, I... I'd take on the three of you right now. If your intellect was as tremendous as your mouth, you'd be stopping this crazy talk. Have no fear. I'm stopping. But the day'll come when you'll be asking my pardon. <laughs> and if you meet one of them infiltrators, invite him in for a drink. <laughs> ha! 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 Go on! Have your laugh while you can. Our turn'll come. Me and the other advanced thinkers. <laughs> Paddy, wait a bit. I, I hope you're not angry with me. I want you to know that I don't go along with McGuinness. Now, not all the way. I, I, I don't think you're half as crazy as he says you are. Well, that's kind of you. You have a good heart, Fogarty. It's a great shame you're such a stupid man. I've been thinking a bit, uh, 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 I wouldn't advise it for you, Fogarty. No, it takes a great, strong character to stand up to what happens to a man once he starts thinking. And I've been reading a bit lately like since... Look at me now. My dearest friend saying I'm crazy. And all because of reading and thinking. And my great brain working out things too big for most men to grasp. Why, it's hard on a man. Nobody could argue that point. Ah, it is that. You know, sometimes I wish I was more of an ordinary man, Fogarty. I... Fogarty. Look! Look at what? It's come again. Oh, oh, oh. Glory be! I'm more scientific than I thought, even. Hey, don't, don't, don't you see it, Fogarty? Maybe I do. Uh, over there. Or oh, maybe it's the lights of a car from the hills. A car? That great shining light that... It's coming down. Come on, Fogarty, it's landing. Oh, I'm getting out of here. No, 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 you're staying with me. You're my witness. We'll go down in history. Well, you can go down in history, but I'm getting away from here. Uh, it's gone. Oh, thank heaven for that. You and your great big mouth. They heard you arguing, and it scared them away. Anyway, you have me for a witness. I'm sure I saw it. I, I'll even swear that I saw it. And I could have sneaked up to it. But, Paddy, yeah? something's coming. Yeah. It is something. Mm. I was right. It come down to let out passengers. Oh, come on, Paddy. I don't feel like talking to anybody just now. No, no, no. Wait. We've got to get a look at it, whatever it is. I'm not sure that I want to look at anything. Things from another world, maybe. Oh, don't be a coward. It looked just like us, I think. Well, that's what you say. It's got footprints. Did you think it would be flying? Oh, come on, Paddy, come on. Now, don't be such a coward. I, I'm no coward when the odds are even. But I've no stomach for fighting against the supernatural. If we could just capture it. Capture it? The two of us? Are you crazy? There may be a whole army of them. We've got to. It's our duty to the human race. Well, let the human race take care of itself. Come on, Paddy. We've still no, got no, no. time to make a run. No, no, no. Come no, no. On, go of me. Leave go of me. Paddy, I'm not going to let you risk your life. Come on, move on. Take your hands Paddy. off me. Oh, you there. Don't worry, Paddy. I'll get help. I'll, I'll get the police. I'll, I'll save you, Paddy. Welcome, stranger. Welcome to Ireland. Help! McGuinness! Brian! What's ailing you now? It's Paddy who's right. I saw it with my own two eyes. You saw what? The saucer. And they've captured Paddy. We've got to help him. They, they, they'll kill him. 
Now take it easy, man. Who'll kill them? The infiltrators. They're, they're invading us. I, I saw them. There's a whole army of them. They had me by the throat, but I broke away. You, you say they got Paddy? They've got them for sure. Oh, go on. Oh, Brian, look. Get everybody. We've got to help them. They tear them limb from limb. You're not making this up, no, for I am not. They've got them, I tell you. Uh, then I'll do my duty. Come on, lads. Come on. Well, you don't feel any different than we do. I'll say that for you. Feel any different? Mm, you look about the same as us. Oh? How'd you expect I would look? Mm. Your speech is good, too. Mark you, I wasn't expecting you quite so soon. You were expecting me? Surprise, eh? Very. I didn't know I was coming myself until this morning. Ah, you don't say. Well, you made a quick trip considering the distance. Yes, those buses are really out of this world. Uh-huh. They are that. Shame they don't go down into town. Be more convenient than walking that mile from the crossroads. Hmm. I suppose you don't walk much where you come from? Not as much as you people do down here, I guess. Mm. You'll get used to it. Staying long? I don't think so. It's a kind of... Uh, Flying trip, you might say. Oh. Uh, yes, you might say that. Wasn't there somebody here with you? I heard voices. I thought you were fighting with somebody. Where'd he go? Oh, he went to get help. Help? Mm. You were in trouble? No, no, I don't think so. But Fogart is a very stupid man. He thought you might be dangerous. Me? Dangerous? Oh, I might have been a bit scared myself if I didn't have such a scientific turn to my mind. Now, why should you be afraid of me? Or anybody be. <laughs> As if you didn't know. Listen, I haven't the vaguest notion what you're driving at. Oh, -ho, so that's how the land lies, eh? Don't want to talk. Sure, I'll talk. If I only knew what you were talking about. Listen. That'll be Fogarty come to rescue me. Sounds like a crowd. Mm, well, no doubt he'll have the entire village with him. I hope I can control them. They might be dangerous. Dangerous? Mm. I wouldn't want anything to happen to me. Now, if you were to admit everything to me... What the devil are you talking about? I've got nothing to admit. All right, then, if you want to be stubborn. But you know how mobs can be. Or don't they have mobs where you come from? Are you crazy? Mobs? Danger? What's going on here? You'll find out. Poor Paddy. He was a dear man, overlooking one or two weaknesses. You're talking as though he was dead. I think I see something ahead there. Paddy, is it you? Are, are you lying? Paddy! Well, why don't you answer them? What are you waiting for? I'll answer them if you'll answer a few things to me. Otherwise, I wash my hands of the entire affair and leave you to the mercy of the approaching delegation. Paddy, it's O'Brien. Now follow me instructions. If you're alive, let us know it. If you're not, like white where you are, and we'll open fire. Well, tell them you're alive. They're going to shoot. Very well. If you want to die, that's your business, but I don't. Hey there, don't shoot. He's all right. It's a trick. You're right. If Paddy was alive, he'd answer. Maybe it's holding a gun on Paddy. Or a secret death ray. We'd better surround him. You, Fogarty, you go to the left. McGinnis, you go to the right. And the rest of you, you go the other way. And I'll blow my whistle, and we'll all close in. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm not waiting to find out. Oh, no, you don't. You're my evidence. <laughs> this time they'll know I'm telling the truth. Oh, Brian! I've captured him! Single-handed! No tricks now, or we'll shoot! I, I, you're alive! Certainly I'm alive. He was no trouble for me at all. Yeah, you captured him. Of course I captured him, and I'm the first man in the history of the world to do it. McGuinness, you wanted proof. I got it for you. It looks pretty human to me. Isn't that exactly the way he said it looked? Didn't he say they'd have a very scientific disguise? Ouch! Make them keep their hands off me. What do they think I am? That's what we're trying to determine. He talks as well as we do. Did you expect him to be like that, Paddy? Well, I admit I thought he'd have a bit of a foreign accent. I demand some explanation. I'm no criminal. Oh, easy now. Nobody's saying you're a criminal. I think you'd better take him along in, O'Brien. For what? I don't know, Paddy. What would I charge him with? O'Brien's right. He's done nothing. 
Fogarty said he was killing you, and we come to save you. Of course I've done nothing. We can't hold him without a raisin, Paddy. It's a clear case of infiltrating. What more do you want? Listen, officer, I've got credentials. I can prove who I am. What about that? He has credentials, Paddy. Forgeries. Anybody can easily forge a few papers. And no matter what he says, it's mighty suspicious. Him coming along right after me and Fogarty saw that saucer thing come down. Saucer? You saw it tonight? We certainly did. That's what brought me down here. You hear that? He admits it. It brought him here. What more do you want, O'Brien? Is that the truth? Of course it isn't. I came by bus from Dublin. I'm a newspaper man. We heard that someone down here was saying they saw a saucer. I came down to write a story about it. Here, here are my credentials. Looks all right to me. Fogarty, you saw it. You know he's an infiltrator. I, I didn't see a thing. Well, it was you, you and your talk. I, I, I was all confused. Ah. Hmm? Well, Mr. Einstein, what have you got to say about that now? That I'm nauseated with the abysmal ignorance of the whole lot of you, particularly you, McGuinness. You're the most abysmalist man I've ever met in the whole of my long life. So good night to you. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the picture of a conquering hero, I must say. I'm in no mood for bantering words back and forth. So, McGuinness is still doubting your deductions and conclusions, I take it. I'll thank you to keep his name away from the conversation at all times in the future. That might take a bit of doing, considering his grandson is likely to be one of the family, so to speak. Oh! I'll not allow it. I, no granddaughter of mine will... Do you mean to say they'd made it up between them? Terry was by for her. They went out of here, her feet hardly touching the earth at all. No, Molly. You can't have it. What if our great-grandchildren were to take after that... that... Oh, that McGuinness. No. Of course, on the other hand, there's an even chance they might take after me. Me being by far the strongest personality. <laughs> I... Yeah. I'll let him do it. I'll let her marry him. Grandfather, we've been looking all over for you. Terry's got something wonderful to tell you. Well? Go on. Mr. Fanine, I owe you an apology. I saw it tonight. Just a little while ago. I was walking along and all of a sudden... There it was, like a... A great shining saucer. Well, I didn't get quite that good a look at it, but... But you did see it, Teddy. I saw something up there. I'm sorry I was doubting you. Oh! <laughs> just for a bit, I was doubting you too, Grandfather. I'm sorry. <sighs> Grandfather, there's just one thing. If you see it again, promise you'll tell no one but us. Let's keep it among ourselves. Have no fear, child. Never another word will the world hear from me on the subject. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. After coming all the way down here and after what you put me through, I ought to have a story from my paper. Paper? The Dublin paper? That's right. Oh, well, I... No, I couldn't do that. Maybe you don't realize, Mr. Fanin, the importance of what you've seen. This is the first saucer ever seen in Ireland. You have a duty as a patriotic man. Oh, a duty, eh? Mm-hmm. Well, if you put it that way, I, uh... I never was a man to shirk my duty, no. Now, if you'd promise me not to use my name any more than you can help... Anything you say. Well, not more than three or four times, say I... Well? I... Well, Shayla, darling, there's no escaping it. The whole world is waiting to hear me observations. Come here, young man. Sit down. Take the easy chair. <laughs> now, the name is Paddy Fanee. P-A-W-D-Y-F-A-N-W-M. Have you got that? Now, the first time I saw the saucer, 